like to call Mr. DiGiacomo. Uh, your name for the record again, please. It's Mark DiGiacomo. Okay, Thank you. Good. Just by way of just some quick background to bring us up to some questions I'd like to ask you about. You are the district attorney handling the criminal action against Johnson, uh, Cote, and Winters, correct? That's correct. Um, and you're thoroughly familiar with the criminal charges involved in that case? Yes. Um, are you also aware that Virgin Valley Water District filed a civil uh, complaint against John Linetti, Mike Winters, Mike Johnson, Robert Kochi? Yes. Are you familiar with the allegations of the civil complaint? I am. I've read portions of uh, the civil file, including the Third Amendment uh, civil complaint. Okay. Have you read any other versions of that complaint? I think I, I had read other ones, but the one that sticks out most in my mind is the Third Amendment. But. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, Your Honor, can I approach the witness and bring the witness binder up here? Mr. DiGiacomo, as you've reviewed the uh, civil complaints in this litigation, uh, did you notice any similarities with the criminal action that you're involved in? Obviously, there's a number of them. Do you want me to list them out for you? Yeah. Tell us, summarize them, what you can come up with. Uh, the allegation underlying both the criminal case and, and a portion, at least, of the civil case is a transaction that occurred in 2008. Um, between Rio Virgin LLC and John Linetti, in which Mr. Linetti had already had a water permit and he was seeking to get an additional water permit from the state engineer's office. Um, he entered into an agreement with Rio Virgin LLC, was signed off by Mr. Johnson, and Mr. Johnson um, thereafter was to receive a portion of um, or the Rio LLC was, I guess, was supposed to receive a portion of the money from the sale of those two permits once the second permit was permitted. Essentially, it was the agreement. At one point, it was oral, and at some point, it becomes written. Um, thereafter, um, the permit gets permitted, and there's um, certain irregularities as it relates to the permit being permitted. Thereafter, Mr. Johnson approaches the Rio. Uh, the Southern Nevada Water Authority to sell the two permits. They only want to buy one and not the other. So he goes back to the Southern Nevada Water Authority at some times with Mr. Winters and convinces the Virgin Valley Water District Board to become involved in a three-party transaction without ever disclosing his interest in the underlying uh, permits that are being sold and the water district that you represent winds up paying um, or trading water with the Southern Nevada Water Authority for the permit that the Southern Nevada Water Authority didn't want from John Linetti. And it's a multi-million dollar deal. And when it was completed, Rio Virgin LLC got about $1.3 million, which was divided 50-50 between a deputy state engineer who uh, would have been in some manner responsible for the permitting of one of the permits and the chief hydrologist for the Virgin Valley Water District who was selling those permits to his employer without disclosing his interest in the underlying permits. Subsequent to that, a couple months later, uh, Mr. Winters, who is the general manager who was integral in all of this, uh, received a $15,000 check directly from Rio Virgin LLC and the, the wire transfer, check transfer out of the uh, Rio LLC specifically says for renters and he received $15,000 as the general manager for the Virgin Valley Water District. Um, that is currently the allegations or, or the factual 
predicate for the best, for the most part for the indictment that the defendants are facing. Um, in this case, you also have a transaction in 2005 in which John Linetti sold some uh, water to the Rio Virgin LLC. Um, and, I'm oh, sorry, John Linetti sold some water to the Virgin Valley Water District. And when uh, that happened, there were certain things that had to happen to the water. Uh, and one of which is the state engineer's office had to permit the water um, back from, I think it's agricultural use to, to municipal use. Uh, but ultimately, that transaction gets completed about the time my 2008 uh, underlying case happens. And so that's currently not a charged conduct in my case. It is directly related to the underlying allegations in 2008. So is it your opinion that there's a connection even between, well, let me back up one step further. That whole transaction you talked about between SMWA, uh, Virgin Valley Water District, and John Linetti, what, what do you call that transaction? The 2008 transaction. Okay. Is it your understanding that that's the exact same transaction at issue in the civil complaint that you, you have reviewed in this case? Yes. Um, I know you're not a water attorney, but you've talked about permits, so I imagine you've become somewhat familiar with them. Um, starting to. Can you give us just a little bit of background, if you can, uh, as to what a water permit is so the court has just a, a basic understanding of that? Generally, and, and this is from a layman's point of view as opposed to the experts that are involved in the case, but the water runs down, in this case, the Virgin River, and the state engineer's office will issue a permit for that water and that means you can grab so much of that water off the Virgin River each year. Um, and the permits are, because who knows how much water is actually going to flow, the permits are very important as to when their date is. So if you have a pre, I think it's 1912 uh, or 1919, it's somewhere in the early 1900s, if, you, if your permit was issued way back then, then you've got the highest possible priority and you get your water first and later and later as the priority dates come, then uh, your water is worth less because there may not, it may not all be there by the time everybody else takes theirs ahead of yours. And so the state engineer permits people to take the water and determines how much water there is to permit and a variety of different things and they become very valuable and high-end commodities that can be bought, sold, traded, and, and those types. Um, and some of those permits, I think you mentioned in the multi-millions. Do you remember how much money uh, SNWA bought those permits from John Linetti for in the 2008 transaction? I don't know why 8.3 million sticks out in my head, but it's 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 in the multiple million dollar range because my 1.3 million dollar payment to the to Mr. Johnson and Mr. Kochi, I believe, came out to be about 15 percent of the total sale. So uh, it's got to be around 8 million in that range. You also talked about you believe. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you said, um, was there a connection to your knowledge between even the 2005 and 2008 transactions? Well, as opposed to speaking about my belief, what the, what the facts that I'm aware of is that Mr. Linetti sold water to the Virgin Valley Water District. Um, and whether or not Mr. Johnson had an interest in that original one, I, I don't know. I don't know necessarily as I sit here today what the factual underpinnings whether there was a disclosure but there was some sort of sale that occurred uh, and there had to be something done by the state engineer's office uh, for that sale to be completed and right at the time that our Rio Virgin LLC um, written agreement for the 2008 transaction is about the time that the state engineer's office or maybe even almost exactly the time that the state engineer's office does approve the um, change from agricultural to municipal is, m is what my understanding is. I sit here today, the facts are. And my understanding is that Mr. Kochi was actually involved in the discussions as to whether or not the state engineer should have done that. Uh, and so um, if you say, are they related? It's very possible that the 2008 payment is actually not an independent crime itself, but may be based on the motive being the change in permitting 
that occurred in 2005. Okay. Um, that's not currently a charged claim in my indictment. Um, okay, and you talked about, I want to get back just to the permits really quick. The permits that John Linetti sold to SNWA and one was ultimately traded to Virgin Valley Water District, do you recall the permit numbers on those? <laughs> Off the top of my head, no. Does 54383 sound familiar? That's one of them. Okay, so that's one that was sold to SNWA by John Linetti and then traded to the Water District, correct? Correct, that's the one that uh, does not have a pre-1912 uh, priority date on right. it. Right, so that, that's the one with a later priority date that SNWA didn't want. Correct, because they can't use it. Okay. Um, any doubt in your mind whatsoever that the 2008 transaction you're, you've been describing um, is the same as the 2008 transaction involved in the criminal? In other words, any doubt that we're dealing with two separate transactions between the civil complaint and the criminal complaint? No, my understanding is, is that you are proceeding for civil remedies for exactly what I am proceeding against at least three of the people here for criminal uh, sanctions. And you obtained that information regarding the 2008 transaction because Virgin Valley Water District came to you with respect to the 2008 transaction. That's okay. correct. During the course of a, of a different investigation involving Mr. Winters, there was a request for you to provide, you, you requested to provide us some additional information which caused the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department to engage in a new investigation of this 2008 transaction. Okay, so we've been talking about 2005 and 2008. Is there, has there been any discussion in the criminal case about a, an agreement between VBWD, Virgin Valley Water District, and SNWA from the year 2000? From the year 2000? Yeah. I know that as part of the three-way trade that was going to occur, there were some other things that the SNWA was going to agree to as terms. And my understanding is, is that those other things that SNWA agreed to really didn't have any monetary value because it was already sort of agreed to and this was kind of a formalization of some prior agreement. But I don't have a specific recollection if it's 2000 or, or somewhere else. But you guys aren't spending time on that. That's not part of the, it's not part of the criminal action, correct? I, I don't believe, the, let me rephrase, I shouldn't say what I believe. I have no evidence or at least no evidence that has been presented yet that that those have any relationship to any criminal activity. Okay. Your Honor, I think we may have admitted uh, Mr. Uh, Chio's declaration along with the criminal complaint in the last uh, hearing. Uh, uh, All right, my clerk tells me that the judge will be done with the Correct, and included with that complaint attached with it was the declaration of Detective Chio. But yeah, we're, we're right on the same page. Um, I just want you to take a quick look at Exhibit R. This will be the last question I have for you in that uh, binder in front of you. You recognize that uh, document marked as Exhibit R? The second amended uh, complaint? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, during the course of the case I reviewed it. Before. Okay. So when you talk about the 2008 transaction being the same in the criminal and civil action, it's uh, based at least in part on your review of this civil complaint? That, that's correct. The, the, the review of this one, the third, I even think I've seen the original. Uh, I think I've reviewed almost every document in, in the civil case that is available to me. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have, Your Honor.